Hey guys, welcome back to Toy Shop. Today we're putting all new brakes on a Player's Trail Boss 250. So I got a little bit of a head start. I was gonna just try to save all this old stuff. Yeah, I ran into issues. This thing was bone dry. I did get it to pump up, but it, now it won't, it won't go at all. And this thing has sat for a lot of years. So we, uh, we ordered a bunch of parts on Amazon. We've got front brake calipers. We've got a new master cylinder and lever. We've got new brake pads for the back and a master cylinder rebuild kit for the back. So I'll have links for all this down below, but we are gonna start with the front end. We're gonna get the old calipers off and we're gonna start putting these new ones on. I have no idea what I'm doing, just so you all know. Now what I already have done up here was I, I took the two bolts out here that hold it right back here on these two ears. So I pulled those off. And then there is on this strut here, this top bolt went through here to hold this brake line. I took that nut off just so I could have some more wiggle room here while I was trying to save these. But that's pretty much both sides of the front look like that. And I have not done anything to the rear. So we're gonna end up having to take all that apart too. All right, so I ended up sticking one bolt back on the old caliper and putting it back in here just so I had the machine to hold the whole caliper for me. All we're gonna do is loosen up this line. We're gonna pull it off. We're gonna get it cleaned up and then we're just gonna simply screw it back in the new caliper. Um, I don't, I don't think you can see that. There's garbage inside this line. So I tried, I figured, all right, that's broke loose. This is the whole reason why I bought all new brakes is because this brake lever won't squeeze in. So even with that off, that still won't squeeze in. So what I wanna do first is I'm hoping that just this is screwed up. That's why it won't squeeze. That's why it locked itself up. So I'm gonna pull this off so that I can unthread this fitting and then we'll go from there. I should be able to put air to this and blow air through and it should come out down there. But I wanna make sure these lines are good and clean before I put all these new parts on. So let's get this off and let's get that apart and see if it's just this that's locked up or if I need to start going through the lines to see where the blockage is. Yuck. Whoop. Yeah. Well, that was not the issue. So that means we got a brake line somewhere that's so full of garbage it won't let anything through it. So I think we're gonna start by finding the other end of this brake line here. And we're probably gonna tear it apart there and see if we can blow air through it. And we're just gonna start going line by line. I want all the brake lines off of everything just so we can try to get some lines cleared out and opened up. Cause I don't know where the issue exactly is, but I also don't wanna be pushing all that muddy, rusty garbage into anything that I'm trying to save. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is just try to burp a little bit of air through it and see if I can't get it to... Nope. All right, so now we start isolating the issue because I can't just simply blow air through the whole thing or else probably the master cylinder would have worked if that was the case. So we are gonna go under the front to the, the distribution block thing that's underneath there. And we're gonna take the other end of this line off. So that distribution block thing is somewhere up in here, which is kind of somewhere in here-ish. So I'm gonna start by trying to take this red cover off, see if we can see anything in there. If not, we might have to take the gas tank back out again, but I wanna do this right. All right, to get the pet cock off, all you do is you just pull this out and just kind of tip it down. So this right here comes down from your, your brake lever down into this block. We've got a switch here. We've got the right caliper here. We've got the rear caliper on the left, and then out the bottom is the left-hand front caliper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, this pipe thread fitting out first, and then we're gonna blow air through that to see if that's plugged up. And if that's not plugged up, then we're gonna start taking other lines off and then see if we can't get some air to blow through this stuff. Nothing. All right, so now we're gonna work a little harder on actually getting this line out of here. This might be our smoking gun. Nope. 
Nope, I'm just rolling the cable while trying to shove this rebar wire down through it. All right, let's try it again. Yay! get the wire cleaned off we might need this for the other ones i don't know yet i know uh this isn't supposed to attract water like wd-40 so i'm just going to kind of fill this full of it and uh maybe it'll help coat the inside so that rust stops okay let's thread this back on and see if we can get air to blow through the rest of the system since now now we know that this is okay All right, so now what I want to do is blow air through this and make sure the block itself isn't what's plugged up. So as long as we get some stuff to spray out of there, then we're going to go work on that brake line. All right, I don't know if you can see that, but I see a mist blowing out of there. So we are good to there. So let's go back to the bench and work on that brake line. All right, we might be able to just blow this and it might just blow right open. And it probably didn't do it on the wheeler because the air had two other ways to come out easily. Whereas right here, this brake line's getting all of it. And of course we did not get that lucky. So let's try blowing it from the other end. Nope. All right. Oh, there, I think that was it. It just made a mess down there. Ew, shit. I just blew that all over my bench. Let's try to see if that'll help keep this from getting worse. All right, so I thought, was hoping maybe this would just be plug and play, but what I don't like about these new front calipers is this, uh, this mounting bracket so tall that really you're only using half of the brake pad on this. Technically that will work. It looks like it clears everything in the back the brake bleeder and it just misses this uh, stem off the strut for your, your tie rod end. But I am not terribly in love with that. It would work, but I did a little measuring and I'm pretty sure this bracket on the old one is the same width, which it should be hopefully if they fit the same wheeler. So I think what we're gonna do is try to pull this horseshoe piece off and stick it on here. So we're gonna remove this gold bracket off of this one, and we're gonna put the bracket off the old one onto here, and that should shorten us up and let us use all the brake pad. I bought them, they're brand new, so hopefully we can save them and be able to use all the brake pad. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on this. I'm anticipating it's actually gonna work. It's a light coat. There's already grease in the new one, so I'm not terribly worried about gooping this up super heavy. We're gonna get her started. Yay! Work the boot over that lip on both sides. All right, now I should be able to stick my uh, new pads back up in here. Helps you get them started straight. Now we're gonna put the set screw back in the back of this. Let's go test fit it. All right, that looks much better. I'm getting the pad where it should sit, where the old one used to sit, where all this rust colored. So the pad's touching all the rust color there, none, none of the pads sticking above the rotor. And over here, how it is without doing it, you're only using just over half the pad on the rotor and the rest is up in the air. So, all right, so we're gonna take this one back off and then we're gonna do the same thing to that. And then we're gonna start hooking up the front brake lines. All right, so we already put brake lines on this, but these will not fit in here. It's too big, but they did come with these little brass adapters that thread in here and that will work. So we're gonna thread these in. It came with one washer on it. Snug them up. You don't have to kill it, they're just brass. We need to get this thing routed. I'm gonna get to snug this up. Make sure you test by turning the wheel and make sure that that brake line isn't gonna hit over here. Let's get the other one buttoned up and then we are gonna go get the back rebuilt and then we can start putting some fluid to this. All right, so I wanna pull this little plastic mud flap out of the way i don't know if we need to or not but i don't want to don't want it in my way anymore all right that gives us a little more room now there's a bar that runs from the foot brake over here over around into the bottom of this shoe right here or this lever so i think we're going to take these two allen head bolts off there's two of them right here so 
We're gonna pop them off to get this foot brake cam assembly off of there and see if that will work. If not, we're gonna have to unhook the rod that runs down through there. This bottom one here, you could only loosen it up until it hit that arm. Then you had to get the other one loose. So I'm pulling, pulling back on this whole assembly while I'm loosening this one up the rest of the way. All right, now I'm gonna kind of flop that out of the way. We're gonna take this bolt off to get this plastic cover free. And then we're gonna try to pull these two bolts off and uh, see if we can get that out of there. Let's see if this is free or not. It's definitely wiggling. Oh, I'm gonna have to persuade it. go all right all right so i looked at this thing and couldn't figure it out so i ended up having to resort to youtube and shout out to maker max corbett because uh, i had to watch his uh youtube video in order to figure this out which is kind of what i was leaning towards but yeah all right so this is a really dumb design there's two pins in here that hold your brake pads in because your brake pads just have holes through it. So these are down in here. There's no way to get behind the pin and push them out. All you can do is see the very end of the pin in here. So right there and there. So we gotta get them out. Now, what he had shown was we're gonna slide everything back. You can either tap it with a hammer or or C-clamp, and then we can squeeze this back, but we're gonna get the pads and the this piston back as far as we can. I'm less worried about being rough on this because we're putting a new, uh, a new piston and brake pads in this, so. All right, so that's back as far as it can go. I don't know if you noticed, but this pin worked its way out too because the part that we took off on, under the wheeler cams and pushes this in to force the piston in. So that's how this works. But so now that we have as much room down in there as we can, kind of hard to see with the light. Let's see if I can get a light. So we're gonna use needle nose vice grips and we're gonna attempt to come down in here and grab a hold of one of these pins. And if we can get a hold of it decent. All right. This isn't making it spin, but maybe I can get, uh... We gotta try to get these pins moving. All right, we're gonna spray a little penetrating oil on this. Now what we can do is try to pinch these pads forward. So we're basically gonna get them stuck on the pins by rocking just the end of them forward. So right now they're in there at an angle, they're crooked. And hopefully if I can kind of pulling forward like this I can get them wedged in pretty good and then use the pinching action of that to try to get try to get something to move a little bit here this might not work now another thing I'm going to try to do is try to put a punch on the pins got to try to get these to move a little bit that one moved I know for a fact this one move let's see if we can get it to wiggle Rotate a little bit. All right, no wiggling. We're gonna put a little bit of heat on this. All right, so when none of that works, because this hasn't been torn apart since it was brand new, we are going to have to uh, play hardball, I think. So, what I'm gonna do, since this is all soaked and nasty and saturated, I'm gonna just spray this off with carburetor cleaner, get it cleaned up. We are gonna lay a nut over top of each one of these. And then we're gonna take the welder and we're gonna weld from the pin to the nut. And then hopefully we can get on the nut with a wrench and start to get it wiggled loose. Once we get the pins out, then we'll just cut the nuts off, clean the pins up really well, put them back in. So let's get this cleaned up. All right, so, First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of open this up a little bit with a burr bit.
All right, all I did was basically just chamfer that. Now we're gonna lay a little heat on the end of this pin. I'm gonna slide a nut over it, or in this case, a washer. That got a little spicy. All right, we're gonna let it cool down. Once it's cooled down, we're gonna use both vice grips to try to break up free together so not all the torque's on that weld, but hopefully we can get something to happen. All right, now it's kind of cooled off. We're gonna see if we can break it loose. Carefully. If I just move this one, looks like it's moving, so that's good. All right, so now I'm kind of pulling up as I wiggle. All right, it's coming up. All right, so now I'm gonna get a crowbar underneath it to kind of lift. Yeah, what a stupid design. All right, so there's one pin, it is not pretty by any means, but it worked. All right, we're gonna get the wire brush out, clean up this other side and do the same thing to that one. All right, now that those are out of the way, I am going to, we're gonna get this piston out of here. Well, we're gonna tap this back plunger back here because that's gonna push that out, get it out pretty good like that. Then probably we're gonna get some vice grip. Work it back and forth, get it out of there. Here we go. All right, so that's out now. Now we're gonna get a pick. So the top O-ring is a smaller one. And the bottom O-ring is the thicker one. All right, now we pretty much have this gutted. If you work the plunger in the back, you can see how that works better. Now we're gonna take this out of here. I'm gonna take it to the parts washer, get it all cleaned up, spray it out with some carburetor cleaner, blow it out really well, and then we're gonna reverse that process. I uh, parts washed it, blew it out with carburetor cleaner, then I took just kind of a crooked hooked, hooked pick and kind of just went around in here and scraped all the boogers out of the O-ring grooves in here. And then I re-blew it out with carburetor cleaner and air. Now we're gonna need a little brake fluid. I'm gonna pour a little bit in the cap. Now we're gonna start with the big bottom O-ring. We're gonna get her good and moistened up. Maybe kind of drizzle a little in there. Then we're just gonna work that in. I'm gonna take a 90 degree pick to kind of pull up on the O-ring. Get that worked in there. Kind of massage it so it fits in there pretty evenly. And then we're just gonna do the same thing for the second smaller O-ring. Get that worked in there. 
All right, now we're gonna take our new piston. Remember the toothed end went towards the brake pad. So I'm just gonna set the whole base of that piston down in the, in the oil. I'm just gonna kind of massage this down in here. I'm just gonna kind of, I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure on it. All right, that is in there now. Now I should be able to take my hand and push that out, and I should be able to push it back in. And that kind of hurts, we're not doing that. All right, anyways, it did come out. So, we should be good there. Now I'm gonna push this back in. We are gonna set our brake pads in there. I already have these pins cleaned up. I put a little more taper on this end here. I'm gonna stick that end out and the virgin ends back in. But I would definitely test fit these, make sure they're they're good. There's actually a whole lot of room in here. Like they're pretty, pretty sloppy. So they were pretty bad. Once this gets bolted back up in there, there's no way they can come out. So, but yeah, these are just, I just don't think ever been taken out. Stick our brake pads in. Kind of have to push down on the brake pad a little bit to get it to go. All right, there we have it. Got the piston slid all the way in, so I got a gap for the fin the rotor. These pins are below flush. You want to make sure that that's what it is. Everything's cleaned up. We got new seals in here, new piston. That's freed up. So, all right, now we can put it back on and get it bled. I got all this put back together, but I want to talk about it for a second. It was kind of a pain in the rear end to get this caliper back inside there. I ended up having to tap it, get this bolt started without the bracket or washers on it, just to hold it and then tap it so I could get this bolt in here, get it started. Then I backed them out, put this cover on and finished assembling this part of it. Now this part here that we pulled off first with these two Allen head bolts, that controls your, your foot brake. Now, you can get the bolt started without adjusting this end bolt here, but you don't wanna just suck it down tight with the Allen heads before you break this loose and loosen this up. Because those pads are wider now, it's gonna force that piston out farther. So you'll end up breaking it if you don't, if you don't do this. Um, I got both started and then I broke this bolt loose and ran it way back. And then these, these two Allen bolts should tighten up fairly easily until they get snugged up and there's no more gap in here anymore. Then start running this bolt back in until you get good enough pedal that you like. So spin the tire and press the, press the foot brake and make sure you get that where you want it. If you back this bolt out, it will give you more throw on the, the foot brake. If you thread this in, it'll make it more touchy. So, all right, so I've got this all, all buttoned back up. I've got the, the brake line put back in, and now we can start putting fluid to it. All right, so all three of our brakes are rebuilt and in good shape, but I don't have the brake lever up there on it yet. So what I'm gonna do is that. Now, because this is just a, a hard line or a stiff line, I guess, you gotta do it down here in the air and twist the brake around it. So I'm gonna get it started. Just hold it by hand and get a wrench. All right, I got that tightened up to where that sits on there pretty comfortably. So now we're gonna bolt that up. Probably gonna put this fairly flat right now and then we are gonna take this cap off and start putting brake fluid in it. Once we get brake fluid in this, then we're gonna break all the bleeders loose on all three brake calipers and let it start gravity draining. Now that I got a mess under every wheel, I've gotten fluid to all three points just by gravity bleeding. I did, had to, I did have to pump this slowly in order to get it to start bleeding. But one of the best ways to bleed a brake lever 
is to pull it in slowly and then let it bounce out. That'll help get work any air bubbles out. And then basically you just want to keep pumping it till you start to get some some good feel up here. Now eventually once the air gets bled out of this, you're going to end up having to fill the the calipers with fluid. So it'll eventually start working those pistons in the calipers forward. So you will have to keep adding fluid to this. All right, so after getting getting quite a few bubbles out, I got tired of pulling the handle in slow every time. And if you go fast, it'll squirt out the reservoir. So I laid the cap back on it. And this seems to work pretty good for getting air out, at least up top here. Hopefully by gravity bleeding it, it pushed all the air out of the bottom. And I'm starting to get some decent break. I can't pull it to the bar anymore. And if you watch this, I don't know if you see that or not, but it's torquing. So I purposely didn't put the gas tank back in so I could check and make sure we didn't have any leaks down here since I was playing in here. But I think we're good. So finally, we got the brakes done on this. I'm gonna finish putting it back together and try it. All right, guys, if you found any of this useful, please hit the like and subscribe button. But until next time, peace.